Hi there, I'm Kaylin and thank you so much for joining me here on my channel where I'm coming at you from my van with my plant babies to actually share a pretty tragic tale. It's been said before, but I'm gonna say it again. Van life isn't all it's cracked out to be. Sure, there are highs, but the lows, they really do drop it like it's hot. Still, whatever nightmares you might have experienced during your time on the road, I can guarantee you that plant van life is still probably harder. <laughs> Back to the tragic tale. So, once upon a time, there was a crazy plant lady who decided she was going to give up her entire kingdom of jungle buddies to instead explore the wild garden wilderness that is Mama Nature. Still, she couldn't part with all of her babies, so she ended up bringing four plants in the van because that seems like a reasonable amount, right? Right, pretty reasonable. Now, this wasn't her first rodeo when it came down to plant care. She knew that she was picking hardy varieties to come along for the ride, ones that would be able to withstand a variety of conditions and weren't too needy overall. What she didn't know was just how easy it was for a live plant to take a spill in the back of a moving vehicle. After a few tearful months of uprooting and miserable soil sweeping sessions, not a single plant was left standing. This was a plant queen who went from tending to an entire kingdom of jungle buddies some 200 members strong to not even being able to keep basic beginner house plants alive like pothos or snake plant. If it's not already obvious, that plant lady is me. Yes, I did bring some plants in the van and I killed every single one of them. But after tending to an experimental plant from a grocery store in Oregon, keeping it alive for a few months, I knew it was time to repopulate my empire. And so I visited one of my favorite garden ladies in Arizona and dug up a few houseplants from her backyard. That alongside having brought back some plants that I left with some people who aren't doing so hot, doesn't matter. I have a new kingdom to rehabilitate, take care of, and grow into a flourishing jungle. I truly feel like I have gotten my green thumb back when it comes down to taking care of plants in a van, any sort of moving home situation. I got you and I'm coming at you with some tips, tricks, and a whole routine that is going to help you grow your own little jungle no matter where you may be roaming. If you didn't already gather this from my previous story, the number one most important thing to consider when it comes down to taking care of plants in a van, anything moving, is stability. You want to make sure that your plants are stable. They, they do not want to be thrown about. That is a very quick way to murder them. My god, please make sure they are stable or you're going to have a repeat of my genocide from last year. There is nothing stable about plant van life, so taking this little extra step when it comes to securing their lifestyle a little bit is really going to help them thrive. If you want to keep it really basic and if you're a patient person then I just say secure your plants every single time you drive. Might I suggest getting a little pop-up dish tub that you can put inside of your sink and then fill your plants with so that way you can take your plants out when you're not moving and put them away. The only problem is if you're forgetful like I am this might not be the move for you because you could very well just end up leaving them where they're hanging out and drive away and Next thing you know, you're, you're crying. So uh, I have some other solutions in mind for you. I typically go the hanging plant route because you're working with the inertia of the moving vehicle rather than against it. It's always a good idea to have clips or something that makes sure they're securely in place and not going to just bounce off of where they're hanging from. You're also going to need to take a little extra step of insurance to make sure that you really have the soil nailed down, literally. So I always think that putting little bits of rocks or maybe a thin layer of gravel, there are a lot of different things you can find to make this work. It doesn't have to be anything in particular or anything costly for that matter. Just putting a thin layer of heavier materials on the top of your soil is a great way to make sure you're not getting a thin eruption of powdery soil dust every single time you hit a bump. I also make sure to keep the general soil level of the plants a lot lower inside the pot, even going as far as to pick pots that are a little bit higher in order to make sure that I can keep the soil level lower so there's all of this pot rim to keep the soil from bouncing out. As you can see, these are really foolproof, easy, intuitive ways, either just making sure the soil level is a little lower so it's less easy to spill or literally weighing the soil down. 
If you're someone who goes off-road a lot and is generally just on a lot of bumpy roads, this probably isn't going to cut it. You're gonna need to take it a step further, but it's a pretty simple solution. All you gotta do is put a thin layer of pantyhose either over the top of your pot or just around the pot, give it like a little snug wrapping. This is really going to make sure that no matter how much it sways or even if it completely falls over, a lot of that soil is going to be contained. Still, the pantyhose allows for breathability, air circulation, and for you to still be able to water the plant over the top. All right, now on the topic of water, we'll be moving right along. This is pretty straightforward. If you need a little bit of help on watering plants overall, I recommend you go and check out my full video on it, but these tips and tricks are specifically adapted to the van plants. <laughs> I always find watering outside helps to prevent a mess, whether you're posted up at a park, camping, Take those plants outside for a little fresh air while you give them a water. And when you're camping, sometimes there's even little tree branches. The trees want to help you take care of your plants. It's a, it's a big fun situation. If I have no choice but to water in the van, I do have this little collapsible dog dish that I can pop open and water the plants inside to prevent a mess. As I said before, van plant life, it's challenging. It's unpredictable. Sometimes the plants are experiencing a bunch of wind. Sometimes it's really cold. Sometimes it's really hot. So they're going to need a lot more careful attention, but chances are since you live in a small space you're only gonna have like three so you're gonna be helicoptering them anyway either way they could dry out super fast one week and not be drinking water at all the next so having a plant meter really does help to take the guesswork out of the whole watering situation when it comes down to light your plants are probably going to need to be low light plants because i guarantee you they're not getting a high amount of light while inside of a vehicle by all means definitely try with high light plants if you would really like to have them but just make sure that they are getting an adequate amount of light throughout the day, which is going to take a little bit more effort on your part. I always like to make sure if I'm just chilling with the door open in the van, I move all of my plants towards that light source so they get a little bit of light action. Especially if I have spent a long amount of time hiking that day where all of the doors were closed, all of the window covers were up, the plants were hanging out in the dark, so you just want to be mindful of how much light they're getting per day. If it's particularly cold and I'm just hanging out in the van all day, I like to at least take the window covers down so the plants are getting their light. If you need suggestions for good low light house plants, then you can actually just check out my full video on it. So now when it comes down to repotting your plants, once again, you might want to find a nice outdoor space to do this to keep the mess outside of your home, meaning go to a park, go camping, something along those lines where you have a little bit of space outside to take care of your plant babies. Chances are you're not going to want to be riding around with a big old bag of potting soil in your van. So definitely try to get a smaller bag at grocery stores or some nurseries have them. They make half size bags, which are going to be a lot better. Still, this can be a lot of soil. So I just recommend if you're going to do some repotting, why not give all of your plants a nice repot? I would say the springtime is the best time to do this because this is right before their active growth season. It's going to give them all of the nutrients they need to make those plant gains, maybe recover from some of the torture you have made them endure. But either way, I think that is the best time to do it and then you're doing it all at once so you don't have to be carrying a large amount of soil around with you. On that last note of torturing your plants though, I would recommend trying not to torture them before the winter or during the winter because like i said this really isn't their active growth time so you'll kind of have to keep them alive until the spring for them to make their gains and recover because i'm not gonna lie the winter it's 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 a really rough time for 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 us and the plants but really the plants it gets pretty cold in vehicles and it also is just shorter darker days so they have less opportunities to get light and that's how they do their whole growing thing to begin with and there you have it. I really kept this one short and sweet because these are tips and tricks specifically adapted for nomadic plant keeping. But if you need help in the plant keeping realm in general, definitely be sure to check out my older videos. I have everything covered from light to watering to repotting. And then you can come back here for your specific needs when it comes to gardening on the road. <laughs> Funny enough, since I used to have a lot more houseplants, I never used to name them, but now having a smaller collection, I am kind of a helicopter plant parent and feel the need to name them. So I've started naming them for the first time. Uh, I have Salem here. I have Lil Pete. Oh gosh, Lil Pete took a spill. I have Lil Pete, um, Lil Peter, Big Peter. I got a few other, um, I have a Sansevieria named Sandman. You know, I have, I have a few good names. I am still looking for some names for my little Chinese evergreen that I am rehabilitating and he needs a name while I rehabilitate him. It'll help him uh, 
find the will to live, so by all means, drop some name suggestions in the comments below alongside any questions you might have. I am happy to help. Overall, I love having you along for the ride, so please do subscribe and I'll be catching you next time. And tormenting your plants in the winter.